Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Politics on the Hindus YouTube channel where we go into details of uh, political stories which are making the headlines across the country and this is generally to do with domestic politics. I'm Nistala Hepa, the political editor of the paper and I'm usually your host taking you through the steps of this unraveling. Well, this week we saw a lot of political events get underway. You had nominations being filed for the first and second phase of the Lok Sabha election. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal continued to remain in jail and in fact issued instructions for the running of Delhi government from there, creating problems of its own. More to the point, in Punjab, it seems that this uh, uh, arrest of Arvind Kejriwal had an effect when Punjab uh, MP, uh, the only MP of the Amadi party from that state and in fact in the entire Lok Sabha, Sushir Kumar Rinku uh, moved over to the BJP. If that wasn't enough, two MPs from the Congress from Punjab again, Raneet Kaur and Ravneet Singh Bittu also moved to the BJP uh, from the Congress. Uh, but it's not as if the BJP did not did not have bad news of its own, again from quarters in Punjab, uh, where it found that it's talks for an alliance with its earlier ally, Akali Dal, one of its most loyal, long-term ally in the past, uh, uh, with whom they broke ways in 2019 over the farm laws. Uh, there was an attempt to get back together, but those alliance talks also broke down. BJP announced that it was going to go into its own. Uh, uh, in Punjab and therefore uh, this episode of Talking Politics with so much of news coming in from Punjab uh, will be on the state of play in Punjab and uh, although that state is going into polls much later in terms of phase wise much later but it is split wide open a four horse race and therefore extremely interesting. Even before the election season got underway, uh, there was one thing over which everybody agreed on, that it was Maharashtra with six parties in the fray, divided into two alliances and uh, with its concomitant uncertainty over political ground that was going to be the one to watch. Maharashtra has 48 seats, the second highest count for the Lok Sabha after Uttar Pradesh with 80 seats and therefore is uh, largely a key to Delhi along with UP, Maharashtra and uh, the erstwhile united Andhra Pradesh used to be considered these three big states. You know, if parties did well in these states, they had a good chance of forming the government at the center. So Maharashtra was considered this really, really crucial election. Uh, I agree with uh, this supposition. I agree with this assessment. But to this, in terms of interest alone, in terms of just looking at the political process and support bases and the churning that is happening in that state, I would like to add the state of Punjab. Here, two, four big parties will be fighting on their own. And uh, this is the first time since the late 1990s that the BJP and the Akali Dal will approach the Lok Sabha elections uh, not in an alliance uh, with each other. And that should also give us some sort of a insight into what has been only been suggested so far that maybe they will do better on their own or they won't do better on their own etc etc so a lot of this election will be something which will allow people to finally put numbers onto whatever it is whatever hypothesis that they were going on with in terms of the respective support bases of these parties well Punjab has 13 Lok Sabha seats as I said not so many compared to Uttar Pradesh and Maharashtra and uh, erstwhile united Andhra, uh, Andhra Pradesh or even West Bengal uh, but considering that it has been at the vanguard of changing politics in the country, both the emergence of the Amadi Party and the farmers' movement against the now discarded three farm laws, uh, it makes for an interesting match. Uh, so, uh, without wasting much time, let's just first go into what uh, you know what fighting separately could mean for the BJP Shiromani Akali Dal combo. Now, the BJP Shiromani Akali Dal Alliance is one of the oldest within the NDA, was forged in the mid 1990s, and from 1996 to 2020, 1920, when Akali Dal left the uh, NDA, it was an alliance that had much bonhomie and real politics attached to it. 
according to the late Arun Jaitley, uh, who explained the alliance to me uh, when I would be asking about, you know, uh, you know, in 2015, we saw that then Kong, uh, party uh, BJP president Amit Shah wasn't really very happy with that uh, alliance. They felt that they were being undermined uh, in that alliance. Um, and, you know, this had to do with the Akali Dal's past record of governance. There were some drug cases. Some uh, Akali Dal workers were, uh, uh, you know, uh, implicated in those cases, etc. Uh, so there was a little bit of um, unhappiness in the BJP with regard to that. Plus, the BJP always felt that, uh, you know, they were being treated too much like a junior partner. Whereas now, under Prime Minister Modi, they had a bit of a surge of political support. So they wanted to assert and then they wanted to kind of get more space within that alliance. But Mr. Jaitley explained to me that uh, the alliance itself had been forged largely for social harmony, apart from, of course, pooling off uh, respective support bases together. Now, Punjab had suffered under terrorism in the uh, 1980s and the early 1990s with Khalistani terrorists gripping the state. As the terror ebbed and political activity was resumed, uh, in 1996, an alliance was struck between the Akali Dal, a Sikh Panthic party and the BJP. It reflected not just the real politic considerations of pooling bases of Panthic Sikh votes and the urban Hindu votes uh, in the state, but also to have this alliance as a mean of, means of cooling down communal fault lines. Mr. Jaitley always told me that this was also one of the main reasons uh, that was cited by both uh, the late Prakash Singh Badal and Mr. L.K. Advani uh, when this alliance was struck. So this alliance, quite warm uh, in terms of relations in its duration, saw the two parties give each other unconditional support over the years, but with the understanding that the Akali Dal would always be the senior partner in the state, with the BJP being the senior partner at the centre. Now, this unravelled under the force of the farmers' agitation. Um, you know, for three farm laws were passed by the government via ordinance, and then it was passed in uh, parliament, but there was a huge, huge, months-long agitation, and this, and uh, Akali Dal found that uh, their situation quite untenable as part of the NDA government uh, to be with the government at a time when farmers and their own support bases were hitting the streets in protest. So they... Uh, parted ways with uh, the Modi government at the centre. Uh, also, the, uh, the, the Shiromani Akali Dal later also started pushing for that uh, that Bandi Singhs or Sikh prisoners who had served their prison uh, terms associated with uh, crackdowns on, uh, uh, on those associated with the Khalistani movement and the murder of Punjab Chief Minister Bayan Singh. So they said that these Bandi uh, Singhs had been in jail for long. They had served their uh, period of incarceration that they should be then uh, released. Uh, and there, there was a written um, undertaking by the government of India that this would be done. Uh, uh, they said that if uh, the assassins of, uh, if those implicated in the conspiracy to assassinate late Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi could be released, then why not these Bandi Singhs? Now, all of this has been cooking up. And uh, even though they, these things were put on the side uh, lines and said, okay, let's again try and kind of uh, negotiate an alliance, that did not happen. And this week, uh, Mr. Sunil Jakar, who is the uh, president of the uh, Punjab BJP, um, he basically went on to Twitter and publicly announced that the BJP would be going on its own. Now, in the what happened in terms of uh, uh, BJP sad alliance when they broke up in 2019, please remember there was an assembly poll in March 2022. So this is not the first election that these two parties will be going separately, but this is the first Lok Sabha election where they will be going separately. So what happened in the assembly elections, uh, which was won by the Ahmadi Party, where well, the Shiromani Akali Dal performed quite poorly in those elections. It won only three out of 117 seats and its ally, the Bahujan Samaj Party, won only one seat. The BJP, which had an alliance with the Amrinder Singh-led Punjab Lok Congress, this was a breakaway faction of the Congress, they could only win two seats, uh, while the Congress emerged as the principal opposition party. 
Now, as I said before, again, BJP, Shiromani and Kalita will be going into polls on their own. Now, while well, Sukhbir Badal, the leader of the Akali Dal, has managed to reunite the, the party under his leadership after the death of his father, Prakash Singh Badal, uh, the scatter of these votes is expected to hurt the Akali Dal, uh, as is the ruling Aam Aadmi Party's clout among uh, Sikh voters. Now, for the BJP, which has been recruiting from other parties, the lonesome track uh, also requires a rejigging of its message. Earlier, they were with the Shiromani Akali Dal, so they were keeping their counsel with regard to the Bandi Singhs. But now they have poached Ludhiana MP Ravneet Singh Bitu from the Congress, and that is significant because he is the grandson of slain Punjab Chief Minister Bayan Singh. Now, in case of the Amadmi Party and the Congress, the two parties are in alliance in Delhi, Haryana and Gujarat, but not in Punjab because there was a huge resentment against it from the local units of both these parties. Now, the principal opposition party in the state is the Congress, which was enthused by the failure of the BJP and the SAD in reaching an alliance. But it has also suffered setbacks with regard to the poaching of its own leaders by the BJP. The Congress, in fact, is in direct competition for the Hindu votes who have traditionally supported Congress more than the BJP in the past, perhaps because of the BJP's tie-up with the Akalis in the past. Now that that tie-up is not there, Hindu votes may also go to the BJP in a large way. So this is something that the Congress needs to be aware of. Now, if the 2014 polls were unusual in that they ended 30 years of coalition government at the centre, the 2024 polls are interesting as they are forcing many parties adrift from old alliances to search for support bases again. Maharashtra and Punjab are examples of states where this is happening and which adds zest to the current poll cycle. This is all I have for you this week. Thank you so much for watching.